Day 6. Time. Approximately 9 p.m. Location. Tunnel Town. Big 52, North Branch. Trigger Happy had been a guard for a good half of her life, and she was pretty sure she'd seen everything that could try and get through the Tunnel Town gates. Tonight, the mayor had to admit that she'd been wrong, but the fact that all her guards were cowering behind her because of a foal in a funny costume was still upsetting. All right, scaredy ponies. I'm taking this one. Just relax for the sake of my sorry tail. Don't shoot blindly. The unicorn mare stepped out of a guard post and trod over towards the yellow foal, who was surrounded by an eerie pink light. Okay, that's close enough. Stop right there and tell me what the, the hay you are. Trigger didn't actually expect the foal to comply, but when she sat down on the ground, the guard chief felt relieved. The strange pony rose a hoof and waved. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? Trigger Happy frowned. Puppy Smiles? As in Puppy Smiles the ghost? I'm not a ghost, I'm a filly, protested the foal. She was carrying something long and red strapped to her back. It didn't seem like a weapon. Nevertheless, it was quite large. Let me guess. You zoomed all the way from Salt Cube City through the marshes on a red racer? Puppy giggled. Nope. I had to trot a bit because of the fat unicorn. Was super boring slow. And, uh, who now? No. Wait, on second thought, I don't care. Trigger sighed. Now, I'm coming over. Don't do anything, uh, ghostly. For a moment, the mare turned her head towards the guard post, just to be met with three pairs of eyes that were carefully hiding behind the barricade. One of her guards waved a little white banner for a second. She wished for a less stupid crew, then shrouded over to Puppy Smiles. Hi. You're pretty, Miss Pretty Pony. What's your name? The fool smiled, her friendliest smile. It's... it's just a filly, with a pair of glowing eyes, probably caused by mild radiation. Trigger chuckled. Are you serious? You're the puppy smiles from the news? The one from the carnival in Salt Cube City? The guard laughed. Oh, please, give me a break. Puppy smiled and laughed too. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, why are we laughing? At the filly's question, the guard chief laughed even louder. My name's Trigger Happy. You can call me Trigger. Puppy frowned. Uh, can I call you Happy? Sure. Anyhow, I have something for you. The guard took a yellow piece of plastic and handed it to Puppy Smile. Here. Your pass. A griffin by the name of Henrietta was here at noon. She waited till dusk for you, but then she had to move. Before leaving, she bought you the ticket, saying that you were arriving tonight, or tomorrow at the worst. Uh, Henry was here? Was she alright? Yes, I think. But she wasn't very chatty. I never did meet a chatty griffin. The guard turned on her tail and trot back to the post. Come in. Staying outside this late is unhealthy. We have some blood wing issues around here. What's up, blood wing? Puppy asked as she trot behind Trigger. If you ask me their trouble, think of them as large flying insects. Leeches, mostly. The mare snickered and beckoned Puppy into the guard post. The place was a low building surrounded by sandbags and rusted plates of metal. A couple of miniguns were placed in front of the windows overlooking the bridge, and there was a stack of ammo boxes stashed in the corner. Three ponies greeted Puppy with scared enthusiasm as she followed the mare inside. Look alive, guys. This is Puppy Smiles, the hero of Carnival. As far as I know, she's on our side. So now we don't have anything to fear. The guard chief snickered. I'd give my cutie mark to see how Lonesome Pony would react if he knew his hero really looked like this. Anyhow, this is Green Pear, Jammed Gun, and Little Bean. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The filly trot forward towards the trio of ponies. Since her new friend seemed a bit uneasy, she felt that something more had to be said. I'm looking for my mom. She's somewhere inside the mountain. 
One of the three guards raised an eyebrow and mumbled, Well, that could be a problem. Day 6. Time. Approximately 9.45 p.m. Location. Tunnel Town. Big 52. North Branch. Wow! It's huge! Puppy sat in front of the tunnel entrance. It consisted of a large archway high enough to let in both ground carts and air wagons for emergencies or maintenance. The entrance was so wide it could have handled passage from both directions at once. The concrete of the tunnel walls entered abruptly twenty meters into the mountain, where a rusted metal bulkhead sealed it. On the door there was a symbol of a white alicorn, but this one seemed more bulky and manly than the goddess. Around the symbol ran a motto, Solaris Inc. Try the alternative. Under the company's slogan there was a big red symbol suggesting danger that occupied most of the door. See? Trigger Happy's knocked on the metal door a couple of times. It's sealed. I'm afraid your journey ends here, little one. But my mom is in there. Look at the arrow. See? It points to the door. I have to go inside the mountain. Open it, please. Puppy put on her best pout. Puppy, please. Miss Happy Pretty Pony. The guard chief stepped back, frowning. Wow. Those eyes should be classified as a legal military ordinance. Still, I'm sorry, puppy, but there's no way inside the tunnel. We've tried our best to reopen it, but as you can see, it's winning the match. But I really, really, really need to go in there. My mom's waiting for me. But Philly stubbornly stomped her hooves. The guard named Jammed Gun tapped his chin with a hoof and muttered, I think that TNT once said something about getting inside using the vents. Trigger's eyes widened. Shush! She launched an angry stare at her subordinate before quickly turning back to Puppy, trying to hide her concerned look under a fake smile. See? No way inside. She tried to take a poker face, but the foal was already frowning. Ah. Uh, vents? Where are the vents? Please? I'll do anything. I... I have this. Puppy produced one of the tank shells from the military base. This one had a black band around its head. See? It's super shiny and super duper nice. You let me go inside, I'll give it to you. Deal? Puppy, it's dangerous. I can't let a foal trot a certain death. I'm sorry. The foal stepped back on the verge of tears. I'm not afraid, and you're being unfair. If it was your mom, this, this close inside, you would already be opening the stupid door. And, and... The filly bucked the door. I can't stop now. She must be there. She must be! Jam stepped next to Trigger and whispered, Why not let her in? She already saved two towns. Besides, I don't think she's just a foal. The Elicorn guard sighed before she replied, We still don't know what's going on inside the tunnel right now, but I'd like you to recall the day the door closed. I clearly remember the ponies trapped inside, hitting the door and asking for help. The sounds of guns and voices screaming in pain and terror. Trigger softly bumped Jam's forehead with a hoof. Look at her. Maybe she's not your average little pony, but she's a kid. And I'm not sending kids into clear minefields. The stallion guard looked at her chief's eyes. Do you think she'll give up this easily? If she really is the famous ghost, I bet there'll be nothing that can stop her. Trigger happy face hoofed. Are you really falling for those fairy tales? Please get real. She's just a filly with a fully environmental suit and mild radiation poisoning. In the meantime, Puppy was still standing in front of the door, muttering to herself, I'm not a fool, I'm a big pony. I made a balloon fly. The filly frowned, but suddenly a new idea made her smile cunningly. Say, Mr. Voice, what is this vent they were talking about? Vent, ventilation system. Device used to move fresh air inside closed spaces. In the case of tunnel, it consists of a long passageway of web-like air intakes from the outside and a pump inside it using fans and small ducts large enough for a single pony to crawl through for the maintenance. The more you know. So, uh, there are other doors to go inside the mountain from where the air gets in? 
asked the foal, trying to translate what she'd just been told. Affirmative. Loading local maps. Solaris, Inc. Tunnel number two. Analyzing technical blueprints. Warning. Part of the blueprints is not available due to military restrictions. Loading sections A01, A02, and A03. Loading maintenance tunnel blueprints. Analyzing. Elaborating route. Maintenance hatch. A01 through A04. Set as new waypoint. The pink arrow disappeared from the compass and appeared again, pointing in a new direction. A grin appeared on Puppy's muzzle. Once again, she outsmarted her rivals. Day 6. Time, approximately 10.15 p.m. Location, Tunnel Town, Big 52, North Branch. All I'm saying is that I've never seen a pony survive inside a sealed suit for more than three days. Your kid seems just a bit too fine to be normal. Jammed gun pointed a hoof at the empty space where Puppy was supposed to be. Then he looked at the empty space, and at last he realized that something was missing. Something the size and color of Puppy Smiles. What the hey? Trigger Happy jumped to her hooves, looking frantically around. She was here moments ago. Why didn't you keep an eye on the filly? Oh, now I had to watch her after the yellow glowing pony lamp? And what were you supposed to be doing? Jammed Snickers. See? Exactly what I was saying. You can't stop the ghost of the Big 52. She's not a ghost. Stop blabbering. Trigger Happy waved a hoof dismissively at the idea, but her companion kept talking. Now, please, Happy, listen to me for a moment. This place is getting worse every day. When we were kids, we used to play outside, and the Big 52 had way less slavers and bandits. The tribes were strong enough to keep order and make every pony feel a little safe. The stallion sighed. Don't you miss those days, Happy? The mare looked down, sadness filling her eyes with a dim shadow of tears. Yeah, but at the time it was much easier. The tunnel was still open and Sun City was a civilized place. Now the Big 52 was just a bunch of detours and dangerous trails. Yeah, I know. So I was wondering this. They say that everything has a spirit, right? Jammed Gun was trying hard to explain a thing that was quite clear in his head, but not an easy to put into words. It's like, uh, a city. A city is more than the ponies that live in it. The eff efforts of the community and the hopes of their families sustain each other, feeding a common will that makes you feel as if the whole place is... alive. Yeah, that's called community. So what? Happy looked at the stallion with a dubious expression. I hope you're really going somewhere with this, because we've got a lost filly right now. So, even the Big 52 is something like that, right? I mean, the Red Shrouders, the White Apples, the Sand Sweepers, and all the other tribes. Maybe they're all separated, but they all live on the same long route from the ridges to the Emerald Shores. We're all on the same road, and we're all citizens of the Big 52. Jam Gun raised a hoof pointing north then arching itself in a slow movement. Salt Cube City belongs to the White Apples, yes, but the Big 52 belongs to every pony that lives along it. And that's a very poetic idea. Still, I can't see how this will help us to find Puppy. I'm almost there. We both had that feeling, you know, that the Big 52 is dying, slowly but inexorably, sliding into the same horrors as the rest of Equestria. And suddenly, bang! This ghost appears, and starts solving problems that have vexed us for years. The Red Trotters are slowly giving up. The carnival was killing more than a foal per year. It was killing hope. Once I heard a trader say that the mares of the tribe refused to have foals because they were scared to lose them. And the ghouls? Do you know how many caravans traveled only as far as the Exchange Station Badlands because making the trip downtown wasn't worth the additional effort? Okay, well, yes, but I don't see how a foal can... Trigger was interrupted by Jammed. And I think she can. The pony was dead serious. Think about that griffin today. Have you seen her eyes? She had this... 
light. As if things for her sucked for a lifetime, but finally they were looking better. She had hope, and she showed gratitude. Think about this, Happy. How many ponies in this sinkhole value gratitude? Maybe some years ago it was still common to think of other ponies as something other than potential threat. Nowadays, you don't have pass, you aren't given a chance. Jammed paused for a moment, but now Trigger was listening carefully and didn't interrupt him. And now, she needs to get into the tunnel. Maybe she is just a lucky fool, or a dead one, but... But I want to believe that she's something more. Okay, she's not the stable dweller nor security, but she's all we got down here. Just... The big ol' Big 52 trying to fix things by herself. Trigger Happy smiled. You are a dreamer and a silly pony jam. If you have a problem, you can't just wait for somebody else to come and solve it for you. You have to face it and work hard in order to earn something. The mayor looked away at the ever-clouded sky. But I have to admit that on one thing you were right. And that filly doesn't know when to give up. I think I know where she's headed, and Luna curse my soul if I'm letting her wander into trouble. Day 6. Time. Approximately 10.15 p.m. Location. Solaris Tunnel. Tunnel Town. A metallic sound echoed throughout the ventilation ducts. The whole place was pitch black, except for the dim light from Puppy's eyes and the helmet's HUD. For the filly, it was more than enough to see where she was going. After all, she was following the arrow. She couldn't be wrong. So, when I find Mom, I'm hugging her super strong, then she'll kiss me, and we'll be together forever. The filly was reviewing the vital passages of her new plan. Because this time, she didn't move away. Right, Mr. Voice? Negative. There is a 99.9 .9 probability that your female parent will not be present or in condition to... Hey, don't even try that. A positive attitude is everything. Puppy stopped for a moment and looked around. Hey, did you hear that? Like, some pony calling? The filly took a deep breath. I'm here! Where are you? The sound of Puppy's voice echoed for a lifetime in the dark and lifeless tunnel before dying. A distant voice seemed to reply, but Puppy couldn't hear it very well. Where's this voice coming from? Analyzing. White noise and distortion are too high. Impossible to determine the source of origin. Oh well. Let's move. Trotting away, Puppy found herself looking down from a grate. Just below her, there were black and bottomless voids, ready to devour anything. Um, why is the arrow pointing down? Loading instructions. You need to reach the main tunnel ground level in order to proceed. Maintenance grate A01-001 is the nearest passage to reach the next section of tunnel. Day 6. Time. Approximately 10.15 p.m. Location Tunnel Town. Big 52 North Branch. I don't give a fuck about your opinion, Jam. Now, give me the light helmet and help you with the checklist. Trigger Happy was wearing a worn-out maintenance suit equipped with a variety of tools. Jammed Gun sighed, trying to appear annoyed. It wasn't hard to sense that he was worried to death. As you wish, Happy. But please come back. Trigger snorted and looked away. The last. The stallion sighed again and shook his head. Rope. Check. Batteries. Check. Canteen. Check. Shotgun and slugs. Check. Check. Common sense. Check. Hey, stop playing around. Jammed gun snapped. This time, he couldn't keep it inside. Are you... You stop trying to kill yourself, Happy. You're a good shot and an action pony, but you're still just a pony. You could get killed, and I don't want to lose you. The mayor cocked her head. Lose me? What do you mean by that? I mean, I love you, Trigger Happy. Since we were just a little more than foals. Why do you think I enrolled into the guards instead of keeping my pa's tavern? Don't go. Or at least, let me come with you. Trigger tilted her head, frowning. You mean, 
you had a crush on me for, like, 12 years, and you never said a single word? Even when Black Hat and I... Trigger just shook her head. You're kidding me. This is another fucking joke, isn't it? Jammed Gun sat down, lowering his eyes. I wish it was. But you can be really cruel sometimes. And I'm a shy guy, you know. But... I just can't watch you kill yourself over a ghost. She's not a ghost. Why must you be this stupid? She's a little foal and she's in danger. Happy grimaced. Since she's not coming back, I'm going inside to get her. And I'll spank her so hard, she'll never do such things. The mare paused for a moment. Oh. And I'm sorry, but after Black Hat, I'm more into fillies and colts. Uh, we should talk about this when I'm back. Is the list done? Gunn's jaw hung open for some seconds before he regained control and slowly nodded. Sweet. I'll be back soon. The guard crawled inside the maintenance tunnel, disappearing in the darkness. Great. I got dumped. Twelve years to find the guts to spit it out, and... I got dumped. Fuck, I'm out of here. Maybe Little Bean didn't finish that wild pegasus. The stallion turned on his tail and walked away, stopping one last time only to whisper, Please, come back in one piece. Day 6. Time, approximately 10.30 p.m. Location, Solaris Tunnel. Tunnel Town. Morning. You are doing it wrong. Puppy was jumping up and down on the ventilation grate that, after a minute of this treatment, had begun to crack. A bolt detached from the frame and fell into the black nothingness underneath. Don't worry. When the grate falls, I'll jump away super fast. What could ever go wrong? I'm a space captain Andromeda! Thud. Owie. Respair spell activated. Day 6. Time, approximately 10.30 p.m. Location, Solaris Tunnel, Tunnel Town. Trigger Happy slowly crawled down the maintenance tunnel, searching for some sign of Puppy's passage. The Unicorn Guard was quite sure that the filly entered the tunnels from the same hat she did, but that place was a hell of a labyrinth. Luckily enough, she had some chalk and a decent light. Passing above the ventilation grate, the mare stopped and looked down the main tunnel 15 meters below. The grate creaked dangerously under her weight, but held... Sweet Mother Aluna. Right below Trigger was the first trait of the tunnel, not far from the metal doors that separated it from the town. Piles of bones were amassed on the ground, as if two dozen ponies were corralled there and executed on the spot. It was horrible. Trigger could still remember the day the doors closed. It was an ordinary day of ten years ago. She had just begun her career as a town guard, and still had to take tunnel patrol duty. Though, of course, she had already been through many, many times before. The passage connected Tunnel Town with Trade Station Tunnel South, and it was the only way to get past Sugartop Mountain besides the pass. But the pass was dangerous on clear days, and practically suicidal when it rained. If you wanted to reach the northern branch of the Big 52 from south, you had to trot six kilometers underground, and pay good caps for it. Then the door slammed shut. There were no warnings nor telltale signs. The worst of all, there seemed to be no reason. Simply, the thick, gigantic bulkheads fell from the ceiling and shut the tunnel with all the ponies that were inside at the moment. For about an hour, ponies on both sides of the door tried to open them. But suddenly, those inside started screaming and beating at the middle, begging to let them out. It was at that point that there came the gunshots. The roar of two dozen machine guns that put a stop to the screaming. After that day, only silent darkness dwelt in the tunnel. At first, a couple of adventurers tried to get inside and hack the doors, but they never came back. For the time, the ponies of Tunnel Town resigned to turning the events and worked hard to make the path a little safer. A lot of ponies died trying to exterminate the predators' nests along the path, and they built up a couple of shacks along the trail. But the caravans today are less than a fifth of the ones that used to pass through Tunnel Town when it was open. Tunnel Town is now slowly dying. Those skeletons were just the first victims of this senseless tragedy, and maybe they were also the lucky ones. At least their end was fast.
Suddenly, the sound of machine guns echoed through the tunnel. Trigger rubbed her ears to be sure that she wasn't hallucinating, but the guns kept firing. Fuck, I'm late. That poor filly. Why did Jam have to make me lose so much time? If it had been faster, Puppy would still be... Wait, why do they keep firing? The machine guns were still roaring in the distance, as if they were firing at something rather than simply slaughtering it. Maybe the fool found some shelter and the security turrets couldn't kill her. Maybe it was too late already. After all, as long as the guns fired, it meant Pumpy still hadn't been killed. Trigger took the screwdriver and the rope from her utility saddle. Hold on, little one. Big Sis is coming for you. Day 6. Time, approximately 10.45 p.m. Location, Solaris Tunnel, Tunnel Town. Puppy trot towards an abandoned cart in the middle of the road. The filly tried sniffing it, but it was a bit difficult since she was wearing a helmet. And this place is full of cool stuff like food, toys, and those noisy guns that every pony is carrying about these days. Maybe it's some sort of super big closet. The little pony shrugged. Very well. Let's find Mom. Stop right there, criminal scum! A bolsterous voice echoed through the tunnel making Puppy turn her head. Oh! Hi there! I'm Puppy Smiles! A robot as large as a pony in heavy armor stood in front of the filly. It had the Solaris Inc. brand on its flanks and a couple of firearms attached to each side. Surrender now and be annihilated! Puppy giggled. Silly robot! It's surrender or be anni- any- any- whatever. The robot opened fire, hitting the cart and the filly in yellow with no less than a dozen projectiles. Now, a rapid-fire gun uses small-caliber bullets that have a decent piercing power, but are nothing special when it comes to dismembering things. Puppy looked down at the holes in the suit as a thin thread of pink smoke started to come out. Hey, I was using the space suit. Oh, I get it now. You're a bully bot! Raising a hoof, the foal stared at the machine. I don't like bully bots! Rock! The security bot sprayed another salvo of bullets at the foal, who charged at it with the Rock of Destiny, floating at her side. When the gun stopped to reload, Puppy jumped at its head, hitting it in the faceplate with all her might, and a stone. The foal was getting good at hitting things. In fact, after just three consecutive strikes in the same place, the glassy visor of the robot cracked, revealing the sensor bay, which was then destroyed with a single hit. The machine stopped functioning almost immediately. And stop bullying fillies, you dumb robot! Stop right there, criminal scum! Another two sentinels opened fire at Puppy, though at the distance they mostly missed her. More bullies? Very well. I have something for you too, as well, stupid bullies! A hail of bullets almost tore away one of the foal's hind legs, but with Puppy, almost wasn't good enough, and the wound simply slowed her. Don't you know that I'm a nice little filly, and I always try to behave? You're making me not behave. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. With the rocket destiny in her hoof, she was already on the second robot cracking its visor. Three sentinels arrived, emptying their barrels into the rubble, but the foal was way smaller than the robot's and their friendly fire destroyed another machine, with just a sheer volume of bullets. Aren't you listening? Are you stupid or what? Puppy jumped on another robot, springing off the carcass of her latest victim. Tracer zipped all around and threw her while the suit rang every sort of alarm. Puppy? She didn't care. She just kept going. Phillies are made of sugar! Landing on the robot's face, she hit the top of its head piercing it with her weapon in just five strikes. In the meantime, one of the two remaining robots ran out of ammo. Spice? Puppy put a hoof inside the hole she'd been making with the hole of Rocket Destiny and pulled out all the cables and circuitry she could. Something in the robot crackled and sparked, and it emptied what was left of its magazines all around, destroying the remaining two sentinels and then shutting itself down. And, clank, Everything! Clank. Nice! Clank. The foal at last found some time to breathe while the smoke of the burning wreckage dispersed a little, 
mixing itself with the pink gas that leaked from the holes in her suit. Her ears still rang with the sound of firearms as the pink goo dripped from the larger tears, evaporating as soon as it touched the ground and mixing again with the cloud around her. The pink cloud is, as usual, didn't dissolve, instead forming a thick curtain of smoke around the ghoul and slowly beginning to vanish only when the holes in the suit were mended. The repairing was almost done when a familiar voice called for Puppy's name. Hold on, Puppy. I'm almost there. The sound of galloping hooves echoed in the large gallery, and in the pink eerie light cast by the ghoul appeared Trigger Happy's silhouette. Hi, Miss Pretty Guard Pony. Did you fall from the ceiling, too? The mare ignored Puppy's question and rushed to her, hitting the filly on top of her helmet. You stupid, stupid silly pony. Tears ran along the guard's muzzle. You're alive, thanks, Celestia. I was so worried. Why did you run away? Happy hugged Puppy. Now we go back to Tunnel Town. Your mom can't be here. See? There are just abandoned carts and... One, two, three, four, five, six destroyed sentinel robots? Trigger blinked, a little stumped. You... just single-hoofedly destroyed six sentinels? Ah, uh, please don't tell Mom. The foal's eyes were two big, pink, watery lights in the surrounding darkness. Puppy, please? Are you... kidding me? How did you do that? The guard pointed at the carcasses. I mean, six sentinels and not a single scratch? Puppy showed Trigger the Rock of Destiny. Ah, uh, but, but they were bullying me. I told them to quit, but they had those noisy things and kept being mean. Mom doesn't want me to beat other ponies. Please, when we find Mom, don't tell her. The unicorn studied the damage on the robots. These three were shot, but the other three, you actually stoned them to death? Puppy smiled, while Happy looked at her. What are you? The filly tilted her head, a bit perplexed. I'm Puppy Smiles! Please give me a break. I heard the firefight from the tunnel's entrance. You can't just stand there unwounded and smiling like a... a... ghost? Realization hit Trigger Happy, like a ten-ton anvil. She wasn't an uneducated mare. But she had heard a lot of stories from the traders and their guards. You... You're a Canterlot ghoul. Um, yes, I'm from Canterlot. Actually, from Cloverleaf Terrace. But even if it's downhill, it's still Canterlot, you know? Happy backpedaled another couple of meters as she noticed the last ribbons of pink smoke vanishing into the dark air and suddenly felt very, very itchy. In a rush of panic, she downed a healing potion in a single gulp and backed up even further. Puppy looked at the unicorn and frowned. Uh, is something wrong, Miss Happy Pretty Pony? This... this is ridiculous. You... you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be talking with me now. Trigger's eyes betrayed her fear. You're just a... a... a what? A monster? A walking dead? A ghost? Shut the fuck up, Happy. She's a kid. She talks like a kid and acts like a kid. I made it all this way to save Puppy Smiles. And I won't go back without this filly. The guard found the courage to put on a smile for the perplexed filly. You're just a little lost, but I'm sure that I'll figure out a way to help you if we go back to town. But I can't. Puppy stomped a hoof on the road. Mom's here. The arrow says that I must keep trotting in that direction. Please don't take me back. I'm almost there. I... I need my mom. I... I don't know. If this is really so important to you, I, I guess that if you promise to be really cautious, then we can go a little further. There were some other things. Destroyed sentinels along the tunnel. Maybe these were the last functioning ones. Yay! Puppy jumped all around like a spring toy. Day 6. Time. Approximately 11 p.m. Location. Solaris Tunnel. Tunnel Town. Please, state your identification code and your personal password. This had to be the mother of all sentinels. It was at least as tall as three ponies, had a payload of weapons that made the average steel ranger look like a toy. Hell, 
Trigger Happy couldn't even name some of the weapons the thing had. We should go back, puppy. No, wait! I know, it's a guessing game! It's a genie! The fool cleared her voice. FT zero zero one six five R D C one G A. It was a long pause. Trigger readied herself to grab Puppy and run like she'd never run before. Please state your ID passcode. The filly smiled and declared merrily. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Without even waiting for a reply, the guard mare hauled the filly onto her back and started running. Please, holy goddess of acceleration, don't fail me now. We. Puppy was not exactly sure what was going on, but she was riding a pony, and riding a pony was always fun. ID accepted. First class technician, rainy days. Access to maintenance section granted. Please do not enter the red marked areas without a Solaris pass card. Happy abruptly stopped, almost sending her passenger flying across the tunnel. The filly grabbed the guard's neck, and the two ponies found themselves looking in each other's eyes. Puppy was smiling. That was fun! Let's do it again! I like piggyback rides! Hey, why are you putting me down? The unicorn sighed, patted the foal on the top of the head. Don't worry, I'll give you another ride, but for now I guess that sentry's letting us go inside. Well, duh, sure! I said the magic words! Puppy trod over to the metal doors behind the towering robot and tried pushing them. As soon as she touched the metal, the reinforced doors slid open, revealing a corridor lit with dim, flickering lights. A distant voice repeated a long sequence of emergencies in a dull tone. Warning! Primary power source cut off. Emergency shutdown procedure engaged. Warning! Intruders in the sectors from A01 to A03. Warning! Security robots not responding. Warning! Comm station offline. Warning! Puppy sighed. Ah, uh, another whiny bot. Come again. Trigger tilted her head. You know, whiny bots. The blank stare from the guard made Puppy sigh. I really have to teach you everything. There are three types of robots. Fun bots. They're really friendly and funny. Like Miss Voice or Questioner. Then there are bully bots. They are nasty and not so funny. Usually I have to break those ones, and I really, really hope that Mom won't spank me for this. And then there are whiny bots. They can only whine because everything is wrong. Like Mr. Voice and... Negative. I am not whiny bot. I'm an advanced pony interface, designed for. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was talking with Happy. Could you please wait a moment? The voice from the suit stopped while Trigger Happy stared at the filly in disbelief. You... You're wearing a talking suit? Yeah, and he's smart, but don't even try that joke smarter than you, and then he I say yes, and you start to laugh. The guard frowned. Hey, what kind of pony do you think I am? I was just surprised is all. Ah, uh, okie dokie then. This is a super smart space suit that talks and tells me where my mom is. I follow him and usually find a lot of friends and some not so friendly friends. But we still have to find mom. Maybe this time will be better. Oh yeah, his name's Mr. Voice. Puppy waited for her reaction. Trigger nodded weakly. Uh, yeah, whatever. So that thing works more or less like a very large pit buck? I guess that explains a lot of things. Like how the hay you knew where the ventilation hatch was. The mare sighed before continuing. All right, little one. Where now? Day 7. Time. Approximately 1 a.m. Location Solaris Tunnel. Tunnel Town. Long story short, it took a little more than an hour for the two ponies to reach the old rusted generator room and make the geothermal turbines run again. Luckily enough, there was just a matter of a couple cables had been cut by a steel beam. With some salvaging and jerry-rigging, mostly done by Trigger Happy, the electricity was running again on the cables. Okay, let's see. Yes, the elevator's working again. We can go up. The unicorn mare cleaned some sweat from her face and pushed open the elevator doors. Yay! I'm gonna see Mom! Thank you so much, Miss Happy! 
The guard smiled weakly. She didn't believe that puppy Smallenberger was really here in this place. But she was proven wrong so many times today. Maybe a little positive thinking is just what I needed after all. Good. We just have to hit the attic and see for ourselves. The elevator ran for more than a minute. Tormenting the two passengers with lousy music that made Happy regret restarting the generators. When the doors opened again, there was a room with a whole wall made up of windows, and there were large screens everywhere. It was the tunnel maintenance control room, and it hung above Sugartop Mountain from a Pramaranic position that let Trigger see all the northern plains, even in darkness over the clouded night. Puppy trot around for a bit. It wasn't a very large place, but it had a lot of metal tables with terminals on them, and some large mainframes stuck into the wall that could have actually been hidden, a crouching pony. But the room was clearly empty, and Trigger wasn't completely unsure that just calling Mom louder was going to make her magically appear. Puppy, I... I don't think she's here. The filly turned her head towards the mare, and for a moment the unicorn felt a block of ice paralyze her guts. Those eyes, so angry, so desperate, so empty. It lasted for a moment, but now the unicorn knew exactly how the filly had been able to overcome six sentinels with a robot, with a rock. Never cross her if you value her life. Ah, uh, I mean, maybe she moved away? Puppy lowered her eyes and sighed. Yeah, maybe. Last time she left some voice thingy, though, that said she was coming here. Miss Voice could help with that a little. The fool was now trying to smile again. The little ghost was full of anger, but she fought with optimism. How long will that last? How long before she loses hope? And what'll happen then? Mr. Voice, we need a professional. Call Miss Voice. Footnote. Level up. Six. New perk added. Hard rock. You've got a rock. Now show us how bad you are with it. When using rocks, you ignore an additional 10 points of the target's damage threshold.